How's it going guys? 349 AM, 18th of January, Wednesday here in Japan. We have a past level question from SK Anatomy for step one and step two. Tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L, man underscore medical, links down below. I mean Telegram, the links to the Telegram group and channel are down below. Now start the clip. 32-year-old man, two week history of pain of his inner elbow and tingling sensations down in his medial forearm and hand. He has no past medical history, plays tennis frequently, mother's Hashimoto thyroiditis, question wants to know most likely diagnosis. Let's just whip through the answer choice here. We'll go backwards. Choice E, radial nerve, neuropraxia, wrong fucking answer. Neuropraxia refers to transient loss of function of a nerve due to compression. And this could refer to colloquially Saturday night palsy where you fall asleep drunk on a chair with your arms over the back and you get loss of radial nerve. So you need to know that this would cause, when you have radial nerve injury slash impingement, you're going to get a wrist drop with a pronated arm. Okay, and if you have trauma, this is going to be mid shaft fracture of the humerus, very pass level, very buzzy. Can also be injury to the radial groove of the humerus. Sounds obvious, but I've seen that asked uh, on anatomy questions on the step one NBME. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice D, medial epicondylitis, wrong answer. Through this in here as a distractor, obviously, he mentioned some pain of his medial elbow. He plays tennis frequently. Tennis causes lateral epicondylitis, OMG. Golfer's elbow, medial epicondylitis. For family medicine, you should be aware that I'd say four out of five times they want soft porn MSK cons uh, answers, okay? So conservative answers for MSK, where this will just be forearm strap for medial and lateral epicondylitides, okay, plural for itis. So forearm strap, all right, soft porn, conservative answers for treatments. Don't go into surgical answers right away. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, guy in canal syndrome, wrong answer. So you need to know this is ulnar nerve compression at the level of the wrist, distal, and you're not going to get forearm findings on USMLE. So this is going to be classically hook of hamate fracture, it can also be due to handlebar compression in avid cyclists, okay? Exceedingly high yield. You'd get paresthesias, sensory findings, possibly motor findings of the medial hand, okay? As I just fucking said, forearm's not going to be affected. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cubital tunnel syndrome is the correct answer. So you need to know what this is. Older nerve compression at the elbow. It's proximal, all right? So you're going to get medial forearm findings and hand findings. Now, it's not overly dramatic. You just need to know the terminology as I prefaced with. This is past level, but they love cubital tunnel syndrome on USMLE. This is one of the most, I would say, underemphasized diagnoses for USMLE. Like you guys watch this clip, you've heard of carpal tunnel syndrome all the time. Okay. But cubital tunnel syndrome, some of you are like, what the fuck? So you need to know two things. Number one, just straight up the diagnosis as we have here. That's what they'll do. Okay, cubital tunnel syndrome, answer. Second is treatment. And as I just said before, family medicine, like soft porn answers for MSK, the treatment is going to be overnight elbow splint. Don't choose surgical decompression. Okay, so contrasting guy and canal, distal, hook of hamate fracture, handlebar compression versus, guy in, versus cubital tunnel syndrome. Etiology is multifarious. USMLE doesn't give a fuck. You need to know these conditions for USMLE. Real quick, carpal tunnel syndrome, obviously exceedingly high yield. This can be median nerve compression within the carpal tunnel. You're going to get lateral hand findings. And you should be aware that some high yield etiologies are acromegaly, where you have growth of the tendons within the carpal tunnel. Pregnancy, get some edema there. You can have hypothyroidism. So I, I threw in the Hashimoto as a distractor. Maybe a small percentage of you would make that association, get confused. Uh, you can glycosaminoglycan deposition, some edema in the carpal tunnel. You should also be aware NBME has mentioned bilateral, this is in really fucking weird, bilateral uh, carpal tunnel syndrome due to use of jackhammer, okay, and construction workers. And once again, soft porn treatment, they literally have on the 2CK NBME just use of a wrist pad, with computer. Uh, they also want wrist splint. Okay, that shows up as an answer. If wrist splint doesn't work, NSAIDs, 
Wrong fucking answer. Okay, there's no significance. Patients will try them, but there's no significance in terms of their efficacy. So after wrist splint, you're going to do intramuscular glucocorticoid injection, not IV steroids. So it's going to be injection of triamcinolone into the carpal tunnel. And then last resort surgery. I've never seen surgery as a correct answer. I'm going to simulate for carpal tunnel. It's the wrong fucking answer. And it's called the million dollar lawsuit because if you fuck up the surgery for carpal tunnel, you can lose function of the thumb. Okay. So wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.